Hey guys, hope you guys are doing good today. Oh, a few minutes late again. It, there's always ends up being technical difficulties. It can never just be easy. <laughs> Okay. Hi Anne, nice to see you on here. I was wondering how many um, people would actually log on this morning, well this morning for me, because it would be a Friday evening for most of everyone else, so they might be out. <laughs> it is so cold here in Australia. It's driving me crazy i feel like i don't want to let go of this mug <laughs> i just want to drink coffee <laughs> hey christy nice to see you on here hey from brazil <laughs> okay so this drawing that you guys are um seeing in front of you is a commission that I'm currently working on and this dog's name is Diesel, he's a blue healer and I love the reference photo, there's so much texture in his fur and there's so much detail that I thought it would be a really fun process to draw him um, and well I took on a commission so it's not like I have a choice anyways <laughs> But I love the texture and everything, so I thought it was easy. But I also, I'm starting this, um, hey Georgie, hey Lucy, Emma. I'm, I'm starting this commission um, next week, a huge, probably the biggest, it is the biggest commission that I'm ever going to attempt. And it's a meter by 800 mils, of, and it's of that, um, that iconic black and white photo of Muhammad Ali um, standing over one of the guys that he just knocked out. So this guy that asked me to commission it for him uh, is obsessed with Muhammad Ali and he hasn't been able to find anybody to do um, a picture of this. So that's what I'm going to start next week. But before I start that, I wanted to just take the airbrush out again and experiment a little because I hadn't used the airbrush for that long. And um, I thought this would be a fun one to do. And I have all the colors of the inks and stuff. So I thought, well, I need to practice with color as well. So why not do both? And it ended up being really good. So I love the really soft background that you can see around here. And I know the angle is very exaggerated because my camera is literally in front of my face. <laughs> but um, the other camera that's busy recording is recording from right above. So I can't exactly get a better view for you guys but let me put this watch over here and start recording okay so that's what i did with the background and then i decided to do the under layering of the entire dog in the airbrush as well can you guys just tell me if you can hear me okay please Ah, thank you, Jimmy. Yep, that is going to be the the picture that I'm going to do. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be fun. And it's in black and white, so it makes it a little bit easy. But anyway, so that's why I decided to do this drawing in airbrush. And the real soft coat over here is also done with the airbrush. So I haven't done any detailing over here yet. And um, the bit of detailing that you can see on the face is with colored pencils so i'm using the faber castell albre dura pencils so they're water-based pencils and the inks that i use are water-based inks so i wanted to sort of keep the keep them all the same i didn't want to use oil and wax based pencils um on water-based stuff <laughs> thanks christine so these pencils are amazing like you can put the light colors over the the airbrush real easy you can put any colors over the airbrush light or dark so it was so nice doing the really soft fur um, with the white pencil and then you can just really go crazy with it I might just show you here on the fur on the neck just how um, great this is how great the pencil is so you just you can create these really nice soft strokes let me just make sure I'm paying attention to my reference <laughs> And then you can build up the strokes like that. 
So his hair, his fur doesn't look very soft. He's got really thick fur and it's it's very sort of stringy, which is like the easiest kind of fur to draw. But just look how easy that color goes over the top of the airbrush. Thanks guys. Uh, no, I'm not from England, but I'm sure I would probably not be a happy person if I was in England because I like sunny, warm weather. Right now, it's only started getting cold here in Australia. I'm in New South Wales, Australia, and I hate the cold. I hate it. No, I tried scratching a little bit in this section over here, uh, Christine. And then I um, decided that I don't have to because of how nice the pencil sort of just goes over the, the top of the airbrush layers. So I, can, I don't have to do the scratching at all. I probably would do the scratching if I was going to go over the top again with airbrush. But I don't plan to. I feel like I can just do all the, the rest of the detailing with the um, pencils. <laughs> and you're so sweet I'm having a good morning but I slept in like I slept until 8.30 which is a sleep in for me and then I was just on go slow all morning <laughs> because it's cold when it's cold I feel like I can't function properly <laughs> That's dope, is it? <laughs> That's an American thing, isn't it? Saying dope, and dope means good. Or cool, or nice, or amazing, or whatever. <laughs> it's such an awful word. <laughs> but I guess it becomes normal if you hear it a lot. Dope. It might just be me, I'm sorry. Then again, I, I can't really talk because the Aussie slang is probably 10 times worse. They, they, there's Aussie slang here where the, um, the real Aussie like teenage kids would say, that is sick. That's totally sick. And sick is like the same as dope. <laughs> and it's, it's, why can't you just say it's nice or cool or amazing? Why do you have to say... Why do you have to use the slang? But, you know, different languages for everybody. Hello, pretty. No, don't knock the camera over. So this is Taylor. If you can see her. Taylor. She's stretching, doing some yoga. Hello. She's got her jacket on. <laughs> you cutie. Oh, Christine, you're in Melbourne. You're four hours away from me. Yeah, it's cold, isn't it? Are you like me as well? You don't like the cold? Hey, Roseanne. Oh, you, you're sick too. Do you guys say wanker? <laughs> yes, they do. Aussies do say that. <laughs> I do not. But yeah, there's, there's a couple of weird slangs. And then, um, thanks Georgie, <laughs> that's Taylor, she's my baby, she follows me around everywhere. What else was I going to say? Christy says, I love your accent, I'm scared to do voiceovers for my videos, because where I'm from, our accent can be pretty bad. <laughs> what, what, what is your accent like, Christy? Did you make your background of... Hey Lucy, um, no, I did my background with the airbrush this time. So that was really fun and the soft result is amazing. And it was so quick too. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do all my backgrounds like this because it took me two hours to do the background and it took me two hours to do the underlayering of the entire dog. So um, that was really good. No, I hate when 
into it. Mm -hmm. Emma's asking, can you give any tips on doing colored pencil over markers? I plan on trying that on a tiger. Color pencil works great over markers. Um, more the wax-based pencils, like the Prisma color pencils and the oil-based pencils. The oil pencils are too translucent, so they're not going to sort of show up on top of markers as well as wax-based pencils would. But the big, the huge lion that I did, the one called the Father's Pride, most of that lion, the mane and the body, was done with markers first before I put the detailing on with the pencils. So you can check that out. Boston. So isn't that just like a normal American accent? I wouldn't have a clue, to be honest. But I love the American accent. I do. The overall American accent, I guess you can say. Like, you get different American accents, I assume, just like you get different Australian accents. My accent seems to be a little bit of a mixture between my South African accent, because that's where I'm from, and a slight mixture of the Aussie accent. But not too much of the Aussie accent. Because the Aussie accent is... <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a very different one. But a lot of Australians don't have such an exaggerated Aussie accent like they do in the Australian sort of movies and stuff. So, yeah, I guess it depends. Oh, well, perfect, Emma. You can give it a go and see see how it works for you. And you don't have to worry about any detailing with the markers. So if it ends up looking like you can see all the strokes and it's not giving a good gradual blend, don't worry about it because the minute you put your pencils over the top, it, it'll go away. You won't see it. You don't use the letter R ever. <laughs> oh my gosh, now I'm really excited to hear your accent. <laughs> I'm probably going to look up Boston accent. <laughs> Just wondering what the lead time would be if I wanted to do a commission. Um, it depends. It really depends. Um, like, I have commissions booked up for the year since the beginning of the year already. So if, if you're too busy to do a commission straight away, then all you can do is just tell people, this is when I'm available to do the commission. Do you want me to book you in? And then you get to get them to pay a deposit so that you know that they're serious about the booking and they're not going to cancel on you last minute. Um, in terms of the time it takes to do a commission, that is something you're going to have to figure out on your own. So try and time how long it takes you to do drawings in various sizes to give yourself a sort of guide. And then you can work out how long it would take you to sort of finish a commission. But I usually give myself a week to do a commission if it's just like your normal 8 by 10 or even a week to do a 12 by 16 inch commission. Stormy from New Jersey. No one can tell unless I say certain words. Talk, dog coffee <laughs> okay that's cool here I like I know the American accent they uh, compared to this, my accent I guess or oh, the Aussies do it too like the Americans will say dance and I would say dance so I would say ah instead of ah <laughs> does that make sense um, what else? Uh, um, I don't know. Apart from that, I guess. I think the English, usually, you know, anyone from England or Britain would also sort of say it like I do. Um, they will say dance or glass or whatever not glass glass I feel weird saying it like that glass <laughs> I 
I have to sort of peek around my camera because it's right in front of my work. Boston is cool. So I am going to have a tutorial on how I um, did the airbrush brushing on the background and the dog sorry when I draw and talk at the same time I, I it just doesn't flow as fast okay I really need to put my glasses on I'm sorry if there's gonna be a lot of reflection in my glasses because of the light but I need them I'm going blind Oh, better. <laughs> I'm seeing an optometrist next Friday. Because, I don't know, every year my eyes are getting so much worse. It's a disaster. And then when it gets cold, I'm like a grandma suffering from sensitive eyes. Because just the cold wind or breeze or anything like that makes me teary-eyed. And then I'm freaking always crying <laughs> it's so frustrating you have a conversation with somebody and all of a sudden there's tears running down the side of your face it's like my eyes are just sensitive i'm not emotional it's a good excuse for when you are too <laughs> and says i've lived in new york texas arizona and now nevada I have a very strange accent. <laughs> um, Christy's asking if I'll be doing airbrush tutorial. Well, if I'm doing an airbrush pre piece, then yes, I'll do an airbrush tutorial. But I am still learning uh, the airbrushing for myself. I mean, the only complete airbrush piece I've done was the black and white Audrey Hepburn. The, the colors in this, I've pretty much just figured it out for myself because it's too hard to find videos out there that show you the easy ways to mix colors airbrush in colors so I just sort of looked up videos which teach you the basic about the basics about color wheel and color you know which colors make which you just search um, how to make a light tan brown or something like that and you'll get a rough idea of what sort of colors to mix together um, but yeah that being said if i'm doing an airbrush piece i do record everything i do so i will be creating a tutorial so it's good that i'm learning as well because you guys will see what mistakes i make i guess and um that should sort of help you as learn from the mistakes too and i'll try and point out before i you know start the video if i have made mistakes so that if you guys are going to try things for yourself that you don't go and do the same mistakes <laughs> Thanks, Georgie. What paper do you make your drawing base? On what paper? Um, the paper I'm using here is actually the paper I got from my airbrush supplier. So all the inks and everything and the paper I got from the same place. And I got these really big sheets. This paper doesn't have as much texture as the the paper I usually use. I usually use the Archer's watercolor paper. And it can range anything from 200 to 300 um, GSM um, in weight. But uh, this paper is different. It's very smooth. So, um, but the airbrush hardly takes up much of the tooth of the paper. I mean, you can, it's like still working on a completely smooth piece of paper. So this, I think is just cartridge paper. It's fairly thick. Um, it's probably as thick as my watercolor paper. So I'd say it's the same weight. 
just not as textured. Chrissy says, I just do backgrounds for now with the airbrush, things that are supposed to be blurry. <laughs> I know, I know. Also, I don't think I do much detailing unless they... No, I think I'll stick to detailing with my pencils and the rest will be um, the airbrush. Like, if you look at the bottom here, I might just lift this up a little. So the whole body of the dog over there was done with the airbrush and it's blurry it's not much detail at all but it's such a good foundation to use because you can you get an idea of the direction of the fur anyway and then you can um, easily place the details of the pencils over the top but I would just use it for blur all the blurriness like even in the dog's face I just use it to um, identify the darker and lighter values and then that was that was it and it was it was such an easy process <laughs> and i love how these pencils are going over the top oh remember christy you said that you want to try watercolor pencils and you ended up trying them and i asked you let me know how it goes because i haven't tried mine and i, I don't know if i'd be any good and you didn't like it so the, um the set that i told you that i have that i hadn't used yet was actually this set the Albe the albre dura set but I'm using it as normal pencils and not using it as watercolor pencils. So, but I do have a little tub of water here and a tiny little brush so that I, if the texture looks too much like crayon, I can just do what I do with my solvent and my oil-based pencils and sort of just softly blend it out with just water. So the concept is exactly the same, but, um, the, and these pencils are really good. So it's not quite using them to get the watercolor effect, but it is still water based and they work great you're welcome Lucy <laughs> Storm says I've used an airbrush a few times yes definitely only the blurry and shadow areas right now I use old canvas to test first so I don't get trigger happy uh, yep so this piece of paper that I'm using now see this this whole thing is one big sheet of paper and over there <laughs> that corner right there is where I was testing the airbrush before I would actually put it on the actual drawing. So um, definitely test test it all. I'm forgetting to press record on my main camera. So Ech. I guess I didn't use the Archer's watercolor paper for this one just because when I was learning how to use the airbrush I didn't use that paper so I thought I'd just use a paper I know is going to work with the airbrush and that's why I used the um, the airbrush paper that I bought the cartridge I think it's just cartridge paper but I'm, I don't think that the Archer's watercolor paper would um, have a different effect I think it will still be the same the only thing is that the Archer's watercolor paper has more texture to it oh yeah if they're scratchy that's horrible these are not these are actually so nice and they hold a really nice um, point as well the only thing is they're too thick to fit in my school sh school smart um, sharpener, which really sucks. So I need to hand sharpen them. That's good to hear, Roseanne. I oh, thank you. Yes, I've decided to incorporate the watch again. If you see like my first videos on YouTube, I'd have a watch on the screen while I'm recording. And then when I time lapse it, you see how fast the watch sort of just zooms by and it gives people a good perspective on how long drawings really take. <laughs> Emma, the background only took me two hours. Um, it didn't take me long at all. That includes mixing up the colors and playing around with the colors. And considering that I have no experience with mixing colors and I don't know my color theory very well at all, 
It turned out much better than I would have expected. And it also only took me two hours to airbrush the whole underlayering of the dog. So all that chest area and that was with the airbrush. And I did the same with the head and the neck. Except you can't see it now because I'm doing all the details with the pencils. looking sideways if you're wondering why my head's tilting in all these directions because the camera is literally in front of my face it's right here there you can see the bum of the camera so it doesn't make it easy and then my other camera is directly on top and I would have this camera directly on top if I could do this while recording but the minute I press record you don't see anything on the screen through YouTube live so it just doesn't work work for me I wanted to tell you guys as well that um, I have an article um, issued in this month's edition of the Coloured Pencil magazine and that came out today. So that one was the um, video that I did on YouTube on how to texture your paper before you apply coloured pencils. So I wrote an article about that and it's been published in the magazine yay I love colored pencil magazine it is by far my favorite magazine and there's so much useful information in there I can't tell you how many times I refer to that those magazines and I look forward to every month's issue Christine, yes, considering how much time it saved me to do the background and the underlayering of this commission, it would have taken me so much longer if I tried to get this effect with the pencil. And it's also harder to get such a soft effect with pencils, um, whereas it just comes naturally with an airbrush. So, And the result of the um, these pencils working so well over the top of it I definitely think I'm going to be doing this for a while. Um, I'm doing another commission, not just the Muhammad Ali. So the Muhammad Ali I'm starting next week, and that's going to be in black and white. And then I'm also doing another commission. Um, that one's a secret one. I can't tell you about that one until it's done and the um, person has received it because it's going to be a gift. But that one, I also um, I want to speak to the person about it once I finish this one and show them look the look at the result can I do the next commission in the same way and then hopefully I can and it will save me so much time and a lot of you may think that the airbrush is a very intimidating thing to use and it's, it's hard and it's it's tricky but I mean I just went to I think I went to one term of airbrush classes, uh, no, two terms of airbrush classes. So that was six Wednesday nights times two. So 12 classes. I went to 12 classes and I was hooked and I felt like I knew everything about the airbrush and I felt very comfortable with it. So, um, and now I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> so it's, it, it is, it's really fun to use. Don't be sorry for the questions. That's the whole point of the live stream is so that I can answer your questions. <laughs> uh, have you ever used a scratching tool that has a ball head rather than a sharp end? Um, no, I haven't. And I'm pretty sure it wouldn't work because you're not scratching whatever's on the surface of the paper off if it's with a ball end. Instead, you're just pushing it into the paper. So, but if you're going to do that before you add the pencils, then it would probably work, except it's not going to be as fine as the scratching tool. I use a scratching tool mainly because it's so thin and fine whereas if you want um, the bigger sort of imprints in the paper then I guess the ball one would work like the ones that you use to like put little dots on your nails for nail art and things like that hi Donny um, this one will be a tutorial on how I applied the airbrush and it will be available on my patreon page once I've finished editing it 
it's a joint. Um, congrats on the article. I never knew there was a colored pencil magazine until recently. I don't do colored pencil yet, but some of the info are helpful for other things. Yes, the info is very helpful for other things. Um, and it, it, it's such an amazing magazine. And they have a lot of um, sort of deals on art supplies and things like that as well. So it's worth it. And it, it also um, gets you open or aware of a lot of a lot of the other artists, especially like on YouTube and Patreon, so that it helps you know which resources are going to be good for you to use if you want to learn from any of them. Would airbrush work good on Strathmore Bristol paper or Strathmore Tones tan? Or would it get the paper too wet and warp the paper? You know what? I, I Airbrush I think will be good on any paper. Just tape it down because the airbrush, you're not going to saturate the paper like you would with watercolor inks or paints. It's not going to be as saturated. It's so fine. And it's barely wet that it dries in an instant. Um, so I think any paper would actually work fine. But that's what I think. I don't know because I haven't tried. So just keep that in mind as well. But because it's just like a fine dust of paint that you're applying to your paper, I, I don't see it not working on all sorts of paper. But also because the airbrush can cover such a wide area in such a short amount of time you're probably just better off using white paper and then just adding the base color that you would like the color to be so if you want it to be a tan color you can quickly just cover the paper in the tan color and then also if you need to correct anything or sort of erase something then you can come back in with that color because you've already applied it as your base layer of your paper and then that's how you sort of fix mistakes so that would be another way of doing it you're welcome, Christine. Okay. So I need to sharpen this. I'm going to show you how I soften these edges up because you can see it looks like a really harsh line. Let me see if I can zoom in. You can see that there's this really harsh line right here. So if you want to cover that with a softer hairs, I'll just show you how to do that. So you're paying attention to the direction of the fur. In the reference, you're always paying attention to your reference, and that's something I say a million times in all of my tutorials. We start adding all those fluffy bits. This is also why it's important to do a background first, because you're not going to be able to get the background in between those pieces of fur if you do it later. And this adds to the realism of it as well because it just has such a good realistic blend into the background. So that harsh line's already starting to go away and as I start adding a few more colors of grays and darker values between the fur, you won't even notice it at all. Oh, thank you, Donny. <laughs> hey, Breelan. <laughs> so, Breelan, if you look in the chat, he's nerdy fan art. He um, also does some really cool videos on his channel, so check it out. And we are doing, which I'm really excited for, a um, collaboration in September sometime. And we're going to be drawing 
cartoon versions of one another so <laughs> that's gonna be super fun so now when I start adding a little bit of the darker grays in between what I just did, did um, it's gonna start adding even more depth and variety in the fur I need to sharpen this more. That's better. That looks so cool. It's so nice when things just work out sometimes. Everything just works out good and it's... <laughs> Especially if you're trying new mediums and you're like, this is either going to be a complete disaster or I'm going to have fun with it. Because this one has just been fun from the first second of starting it, which is really good. And then... The only thing I must say, and it's so creepy, and I think it, it's probably just me being silly, but I did the airbrushing and all the shadows on the dog and that, but not his eyes, because I knew I was going to draw his eyes. I wasn't going to attempt to airbrush his eyes in. And he's got a very stern look in his face. It's a very um, look into your soul kind of look in his eyes. But anyway, so his eyes went in there, and there was so much de detailing left to do. Well, not detailing, but just so much more... Um, layers that I needed to do with the airbrush before I was going to get to the colored pencils but because his eyes were not in there it was just like hollow looking it freaked me out like it looked so scary without its eyes that I just as soon as I finished doing the values <laughs> in the dog's face I had to draw the eyes in there because I couldn't stand having that hollow empty look back at me which was just freaking me out <laughs> Oh, thank you, Brennan. Hey, from Norway. Very nice art road. Thanks, Hilda. So this is a commission that I'm busy working on. And because it's a lot of using different materials than what I usually use, I thought it would be good to sort of stream a little bit of it so that you guys can see. You know what? I'm not even going to look at my drawing. I'm just going to look on the screen. Okay, that, that feels very weird. <laughs> Never mind, I'll look at the drawing. The screen's not as on time as I am. <laughs> no. And then when you draw the eyes, Christy, I'm sure you feel the same. Um, the minute the eyes are in, then you feel like there's life in the drawing. So that's what makes something look alive, is the eyes. So it's... It's just something that needs to be added because I'm also used to when I'm doing drawings, eyes are usually the first thing that I put in. So, um, yeah. Uh, Christine says I'm unsure about it, about how to go about choosing colors for the first layers. How do you know what colors to put down first when all you really see is the final color in the reference photo? Um, that you know what that is a bit tricky. Like I know that I was sort of just sitting in front of all my colored airbrush inks, thinking how am I going to get these colors? Which colors do I use? And then I was like, you know what? Um, actually. Let me show you this and then I, I can give you an idea of, of, so here is just the reference printed. So this is the print of the reference and on, on the back here, these are the colors that I wanted to put in. So I wanted it to be very um, a blurry like it is here. So I can see, I can see there's little bits of green in there. 
and there's warmer tones of brown so they're almost like a magenta like the purpley red tones of brown and then you've got more of the yellowish tones of brown in there so i was like okay you know what i'm just gonna find three colors so i'm gonna find a light sort of tan brown i'm gonna make that and i just looked up how to make a light warm tan brown and then i'm going to mix up some greens or not mix up some greens i just had one green and then um, a little bit of the dark brown and then uh, the like warm brown and then a very dark brown for the really dark areas so those are i was like okay those are the colors i'm gonna have and then notice that my background looks nothing like the reference background like mine has a little more color in it and a little more you know and it's not exactly like the background like i sort of just kept the same concept but i wasn't going to try and be perfect about it because that just makes it unpleasant and it, it's hard it's not that easy to get that perfect unless you're doing it huge because then you can really break it down into small areas but anyway so that's how i sort of went about the colors and then what i did is i created a variety of the darker tones on these corners because you can see they're darker and then I added the lighter tones over here and I sort of used squiggly motions with the airbrush so nothing looked exact and the airbrush naturally gives you a soft blurry effect so you don't have to worry about details like if you and like that just works perfect because you know that the airbrush is going to give you a blurry effect and then I just kept going and then I'd add a little bit over the top and the beauty about using an airbrush is that if something is too dark you can go over it with the lighter inks or if something is too light you can obviously make it darker so um, the airbrush is a very forgiving medium to use because you can always just correct yourself okay so I hope that answered your question <laughs> Anna's hey new to your channel are you doing this full-time love your work by the way thank you Anna yes I do this full-time so I I do commissions tutorials um, I work on I'm, I'm starting to put together my next Udemy course and I'm also doing my first workshop next week Saturday um, and there's going to be 16 people attending the workshops. I'm really excited about it. And then I'm going to try and do as many workshops as I can on the weekends as well. And um, whatever I'm doing as a commission or whatever drawing I'm doing at the time will end up being a tutorial on Patreon. <laughs> you're getting annihilated in warcraft you know what it's so fun like once you get consumed in a game you're consumed in a game now, i don't play computer games because i suck at it i've got no sense of coordination and i can never get my movement right by using the keyboard keys and let's not even talk about a playstation on xbox but i am addicted to mini war gaming like i have so many we have so many um little models like kingdom death and warhammer are by far my favorite games to play and they aren't games that are gonna be finished in a short amount of times it takes you days and it can take you weeks to play a complete game if you get that into it so um my boyfriend and i try whatever spare time we have on the weekends and that that's what we'd be doing so if it wasn't for him working today that's probably what we would be doing right now <laughs> Um, but actually there's a lot of paints in that sort of set out on the table and the paints are uh, because we're painting some more of the Warhammer army and a little bit of we bought a new board game called Infinity so we're going to try that one sort of has the same concept as Warhammer just quicker I guess Is there anyone else that plays board games like this? Like, I so badly want to visit America so that I can go to the, the mini wargaming conventions there because it is huge. It is huge. And I'd probably have to go there with a limited amount of money because you just end up going home broke with all the games that you'd want to buy there. Even just to play, 
to play with other people that play the games as well. Anyway, so that's another nerdy part of my life. Yeah, we don't go out for dinner dates. We we just want to game at home whenever <laughs> we get the chance. <laughs> yeah, Christy, I know. The eyes just bring everything together, don't they? If they're not there, then it's just super, super creepy. Storm, I like doing ears first. They they can hear me when I'm speaking to them. <laughs> oh, there's so many artists out there. We are all so weird. All of us are weird. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Talking to your drawings. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Um, what was I going to say? How long have I been streaming for? So it's 10 to 11. So almost an hour. So I am probably going to head off soon so I can actually have breakfast. <laughs> and then um, I'll probably keep going with this piece. But at least that gives you guys a little bit more of an idea of um, what I'm up to. And how the airbrushing and that's working. And the detailing that you can get on top of the airbrush. I mean, look at the face. It's... It's got a lot of detail. I know there's a reflection in the right eye. It looks a bit weird. But there we go. And it was so easy to do that. It was really, really easy. So I'll show you guys exactly how I did all of this um, when I do the Patreon tutorial. And then you guys can try it out for yourself if you want to. Um, okay. Let me just see if I missed any other questions. Pictionary, because you won. <laughs> Christy, do yourself a favor and look up Warhammer 40k. And then that's like extreme gaming. <laughs> You'd never look at board games the same again. <laughs> you have three sets of Warhammer. Love painting the figures, but I don't play. How can you not play? Like, I... Okay, I can't you'd say that, you know. Some people are just into the painting, not so much the playing. Actually, I never thought I'd get into the playing. But once we started, and we started just getting hooked on all these board games, I just it went frantic from there, and that's all we wanted to do. And I find that after you've painted a model, you are so excited about the model that you want to play with it. So it, it just becomes your your army and you want to see what you can do with it. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> Alright, you guys enjoy your night. For those of you that are in your night time, I am going to finish off my morning by having some tea and editing some videos and then I will see you guys whenever. So thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you soon. Bye!